Have you ever had a nearly perfect gravity form set up in place, but just needed a tiny bit of extra code in order to achieve your goal? CodeChest is a free plugin that allows you to add custom JavaScript or CSS code to your gravity forms, and it can do a lot more too. Gravity Forms comes with a ton of features out of the box, but sometimes we may want to adjust the styling of our form slightly or add in special functionality to our checkboxes or our drop-down menus, depending on our use case. Adding custom code will get the job done, and CodeChest makes it easy to automatically apply this code to your form, save it, and keep it for future use. In this video, I'm gonna go through a few examples so that you can see how easy it is to implement and store on your forms. CodeChest also comes with a few other nifty features that I'll show you along the way. Let's get started. For our first example of how we can use CodeChest to improve our gravity forms, I'm gonna add a simple none of the above checkbox to my form here, which when clicked, will disable the rest of the checkboxes in this section. To get started, let's head to the code chest, which as long as you have it installed properly, should be under forms, and then you can hover over the settings of your form and click code chest. Here we see two fields, JavaScript and CSS, and this is where we're gonna paste our custom code that we're gonna get from the snippet library. That's right, even if you don't know how to code, GravityWiz has a fantastic library of a ton of different snippets of code that you can just copy and paste. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. Here you see I found the none of the above checkbox. I can scroll down, I see the code right here. I can click copy, head back to our code chest and paste it in the JavaScript. And then we can scroll down and click Save Settings. You'll notice at the top of the code that we just added that there's a class here that's gonna loop through all of the checkboxes in the section that we just showed. Go ahead and copy this class minus the period here because we're gonna need to add this to our section of checkboxes along with actually adding our none of the above checkbox. So now we can head up to Edit and then we can click on the settings of our checkboxes, go to Edit Choices, and let's add a checkbox below that says none of the above. Now we need to add that class that we copied in our code, and to do that, we can scroll down to Appearance, and right here under Custom CSS Class, we can paste that in. Now we can save our form and we can head back to our website. Now if I refresh the page, we see that none of the above checkbox here, and when I give it a click, you see that I can no longer check the boxes that are here. As you can see, it's so easy to get additional functionality in our forms using the snippet library and code chest. So let's do another one. For our next example, when selecting an option in one of the dropdowns in our form, I want the other dropdowns in the form to become disabled. So for example, in our form here, I have three different snacks to choose from, but you're only allowed to choose a snack from one category. So if I head to cookies and click a cookie, I'm also able to come down to candy and also veggies as well. And we wanna make sure that we are only able to select one option from one of these dropdowns. Luckily, the snippet library already has something in place for this called dropdown lockouts. So to use this, we can just scroll down and we can copy the code right here. And then we can head back to our code chest and I'm gonna paste it right below the JavaScript code we wrote in the last example. Unlike the last example, we will need to modify this code slightly, but it's just changing a few IDs right here on this row. These inputs refer to the three dropdowns you saw on my form. And the number after the underscore is the ID of those dropdowns. These instructions also exist in the snippet library. So to find these IDs, let's head back to our form. Now we can scroll down to our dropdowns here, click the settings, and there's the ID right here on the right. So we have ID 4, ID 6, and ID 7. It's worth noting that you can feel free to set your dropdowns up however you like, but make sure that under the appearance tab, you have a placeholder set for all of your dropdowns. This will act as our default option, which when changed will lock out the other two dropdowns. Now we can save our form and head back to code chest. Now that we know our IDs, we can go ahead and replace them right here. So I'll do four, six, and seven. One cool thing about code chest is the GF form ID variable, which automatically loads your JavaScript code in the appropriate context on the right form. This variable makes it easier to apply the same snippet to multiple forms. And now we can head back to the form on our page to see our lockouts in action. So now that we're back on our form, we can go ahead and refresh the page. And now if I click the cookies dropdown and select a cookie, you'll see that these other two dropdowns have been disabled and I can no longer select an option. Now that we've seen how to do a couple of JavaScript examples, for our last example, I wanna show you how to add some CSS code to be able to change the look of your form. So if we go ahead and scroll up, here we can see a newsletter signup section that I tried to add with a horizontal form, but you can tell that it doesn't quite look right. So I'm gonna use a slightly modified version of this code that I found on GravityWiz's website to make the form look a lot better. So I can go ahead and copy all of this and head back to our code chest. 
and I'll scroll down and paste this in the CSS section of Code Chest. One of the great things about Code Chest is if you like writing code like I do, you can even write custom code yourself to add a few more features to your form. And I can go ahead and add that custom code right below the code we just pasted in here. And you'll see here that there's another button, Scope CSS to this form only. This is very, very similar to the GF form ID that I mentioned earlier, but for CSS. So if you want this code to only be applied to this form, make sure to have this toggled on. Just like in our checkbox example, sometimes our CSS code will have a class that we need to add to our form in order for it to work properly. So if we scroll up, we see at the top here this GW horizontal form wrapper that's scattered throughout the CSS code. This is the class that we need to add to our form, so you can go ahead and copy it now. So to do that, let's go ahead and go to the settings and go to form settings, and then scroll down and just make sure that under CSS class name, you have the correct class name. Now, if we head back to our page and we go ahead and refresh, there we go. We see a nice section with our newsletter sign up horizontal form. And we even have a few little details there. When I hover, I get that nice glow effect on the button and on the input fields. Hopefully by now you can see the truly limitless potential you have when using code chest with your gravity forms. Whether you need just a little extra functionality or you want to play with the styles of your form, code chest lets you do it all with just a couple of clicks. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. If you have an idea for a video you'd like to see us do in the future, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.